this uh, this noon we have with us uh, Dr. Harry Gerland, who is a product of Michigan, and he's uh, president of Comemco Incorporated from uh, California and makes some of these uh, microcomputer systems. Uh, when I say he's a product of Michigan, he came from Detroit, went to school in uh, Kalamazoo College, and then went out to the uh, big place called Stanford University, where I believe he was the assistant chairman of the electronics department. Got his PhD there, and here he is today. And so without any... Oh, I, I did have one thing. Every speaker has a book. So the book's name is, and it was just introduced, is Introduction to Microprocessor System Design by Harry Garland, Dr. Harry Garland. So. Uh, this is not my uh, first trip to Kelvin College. The, the uh, one and only other one time I was here, uh, I was doing a remote uh, basketball game for Kalamazoo College as the uh, engineer in charge of connecting up to the phone line to try to, uh, to, try to get the signal back to uh, Kalamazoo for, for broadcast on our station. Uh, and uh, it, it was kind of exciting. The, when you rent a line from the telephone company, you have to guarantee that you'll keep the signal within a certain decibel level so it doesn't conflict with other lines. And we didn't exactly have the right equipment. What we used for transmitting over the phone line was a Heathkit 10 watt power amplifier. And uh, the, the administration of Kelvin College may, may still, uh, still remember me for having uh, their entire phone system uh, <laughs> clogged with the play-by-play uh, -play -play of the basketball game. <laughs> The uh, on that day. Uh, key note I would like to strike in this uh, 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 talk, which is addressed uh, or advertised as a, as a keynote talk, is that the technology has advanced very quickly. And as a result of that, there is really a gap between the technology that's available and the applications that are, that are making use of it. Uh, again, if you go back to the days of radio, G Radio is, was here for a long time, but it, uh, it, it takes a, a while before technology really takes advantage of it and makes use of it before you see television and uh, sophisticated uh, avionics and uh, microwave landing systems and what have you. There's been no real advances in the fundamental radio work since the early part of the century, or uh, comparatively few, but the applications take time to develop. Furthermore, when you have technology available like the microprocessor that comes and uh, the general population may not be trained in this because they're used to hardwire logic or other ways to approach uh, applications. When the technology makes a step jump like that, there becomes an opportunity for people. Because it's those people who are, are skilled, come to conferences like this to learn about the new technology. It is those people who are able to take advantage of it and make systems that are economically competitive with, with existing uh, uh, systems and uh, uh, work, work very well. That's the sort of business we're in at, at, at Cremenco in bringing microprocessor technology to the board level, to the system level. And uh, many of our customers are then in the position of taking those boards and those systems and bringing that to an application level, whether it be in accounting or process control or uh, any of a number of different applications, and uh, 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 finding out that that, that works, works very well. So the, the key note really is that the technology has advanced very quickly. There's an opportunity here for, for people with applications to take a look at these and see if they can't be done much better with this newer technology. And uh, I think it's that opportunity that we, uh, none of us really wanna, want to miss. Um, in taking a look at the, the types of applications these are used for, uh, many of you come from a number of different fields. I was talking with some people uh, before lunch. Uh, there's people interested in business applications, accounting applications of microcomputers, uh, people interested in process control, uh, avionics, uh, a number of other areas. Um, and uh, in selling these uh, products that we do th th through Cremenco, it, it's, it's kind of a neat opportunity for me because w we get to see a large number of, of different applications, some that we never really, uh, r really dreamed of. Um, and I'll just mention, mention a few of them, and, and then we can perhaps draw on those to uh, get some general ideas for, for what sort of application areas these systems can be, uh, can be used in. Um, just last week, we were down at the uh, audio show in, in Los Angeles, and uh, uh, 
uh, walking by the JBL booth, and they're, of course, a large uh, speaker manufacturer, for those of you who have, have hi-fi systems. And uh, somewhat to our surprise, is, is there's one of our, our Kermamco systems sitting, sitting there in the booth doing frequency response curves on, on some, of their, uh, some of their speakers. And so this is, this is one application area where microprocessors made an important impact, and that's in, in the laboratory, in laboratory measurement, in automated laboratory work. Uh, in the business world, uh, we just recently sold uh, some uh, uh, 32 systems to the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And uh, here's an application where uh, a number of uh, individual people working on the uh, commodities uh, type uh, market need access to information on uh, transactions and uh, up-to-date up information. Furthermore, not only do they, uh, again, want to access data like you would in the experiment configuration, but they want to process the data. They want to have information on recent highs, recent lows, averages, weighted averages, perhaps uh, averages compared to industry average, uh, compared to overall averages, th this type of information. Uh, and, and so here's an opportunity for them to get this kind of, kind of computing power on an individualized basis where they aren't all tied into some large mainframe and have to uh, uh, essentially take uh, turns in the, in the machine cycle for, uh, uh, for, for access to it. Um, another area is uh, in, in the area of intelligent instrumentation. You, you don't need to have a, a, a complete um, uh, uh, system with uh, disk and so on, like uh, Phil, for example, is showing in the, in the demo room. Um, perhaps you only uh, you have perhaps a, a fairly complex system and you just want to add some microprocessor intelligence to it. And uh, we, we had one, one experience at the, the Kremenko factory where a, a vendor came in with a new uh, intelligent signature analyzing uh, uh, machine. Uh, for those of you, uh, this is electronic signatures. For those of you familiar with it, this is a, 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 a technique that Hewlett Packard has developed for digital troubleshooting, where you take a look with a probe at what's known as the signature of a circuit, and it gives you a unique four-digit uh, 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 number, uh, hexadecimal digits, uh, which uh, tells you whether or not uh, that part of the circuit is, is operating according to the, the standard waveform that's supposed to be there. So you measure these so-called signatures throughout the, uh, throughout the circuit. And what this uh, company, is, uh, Phoenix Digital is the name of it, in, uh, had developed was a, a little portable unit uh, that uh, could be brought to the field, used for uh, digital analyzing, give the signature, not only give the signature, but it was an intelligent instrument in that you could program it for a particular product. So it would know what signature was supposed to be at test point 251. And if that signature wasn't there, it would prompt you, hey, if that signature wasn't there, you better go down to test point 257 to see if you can isolate the problem. Or if the signature was there, it'll send you to test point 280 to continue to look to, to see where the, the problem is. And uh, this looked like a very, very slick instrument. That their salesman brought it in, and I, I just sort of asked him, uh, uh, you know, if they were doing a sales trip up to the, the San Francisco Bay Area or how large a company they were, if you know, they were a local place or, or from, from Phoenix. They said no, they were, they were just from Phoenix and uh, didn't really have a sales office up here. I asked them if they were going to be visiting other companies around the Bay Area. No, no, they were just, just coming up to see Kremko. And, uh, well, uh, we're not the world's largest company. I was sort of surprised that uh, they, uh, they, uh, they came up to, uh, just to see us. And so I asked him, well, how come you just came up to see us? And he said, well, I'll show you. And he unscrewed his uh, front cover from his, uh, his box, opened it up, and there's one of the Kremko single-card computers running, uh, running his, his instrument. And it, it was particularly unusual since that product had only been, been shipped for, for two months, and so I, I was surprised. Uh, but here was a person who, who wanted to develop some intelligent instrumentation uh, he did not start at the chip level uh, with a Z80 or 6800 or whatever microprocessor because that would have taken too long. What he did is buy a, a pre-assembled board like, like some of the ones you've, you've probably seen in the other uh, seminar sessions you've had, put it into his system, and in two months he had a product he was ready to take and, uh, and show people. So this, this area of, of, of intelligent instrumentation is, is, is a very important one indeed. Let me just, just reiterate the, the theme that I think is very important, namely the Technology has developed to a, a really a new high in the digital world. It's continuing to develop. There's a gap between the application area and the technology, and that gap is actually growing. And that gap means there's opportunity, I think, for everybody in this room to take advantage of it in their own use or in their, in their, in their corporate use. And in taking advantage of it, I think we need to be aware of, of new applications where perhaps computers have never been used before uh, because of the, uh, the, the uh, uh, relatively high cost. With the new low cost, I think there's many, many new things we can do. Okay, thank you.